Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Wood From The Trees. I have been trying to get this man on for so long. He's like, you're the busiest man in the world at this time. Like, you really are. Shane Flynn. Shane Flynn Fitness from Mullingar. And uh, I've been following Shane for a long time and he's a fierce, nice fella. Now, I'm not the fittest guy in the world, so I'm not following him to be a bodybuilder. I just find him so motivational, just for my mind more so than anything else. Well, Shane, welcome to the podcast. What's the story, David? Um, <laughs> we, we've nearly everything talked about on the way up. Not, we have to be very careful that we forget, or not to forget to say that stuff, because that was the problem. I was nearly... I feel like I'm going in to play a county final or something. I don't know, something small. I don't know what it is, or, you know, because I've been texting you. Like, basically, we've been texting each other back and forth because there's been so much stuff that comes to me. I get brainwaves in a clinic or I get brainwaves, you know, when I'm just daydreaming and I go, oh, fuck, that's the shit I need to talk about or that's the stuff yeah. that there I have to say. So I start, and I never do it, by the way. This is why I'm going to be straight with you. This means, this particular podcast means a lot because that's why I am nervous with it a bit. Because I've done actually prep work. I don't normally yeah. prep for anything. It, it means a lot to me as it's well. It's completely off because the cuff. Because I've been watching you and I feel the stuff that you do and the stuff that you say could help genuinely so many people. Because it's stuff I never knew about. Yeah. Uh, deep down you know there's something mm. affecting you that's not just on top that you can see. Yeah. But there is something. So I suppose we'll get straight into it. I want to explain to people about you because they're not going to know and I want people to know. Yeah. But just what do you think people will learn today? Um, I've brought a, an article with me which has proven to be so powerful because um, <clears throat> look, we've all read books and we've all read things, we've all read different uh, bios and people's stories and it's always a story, the one that's a little bit more powerful, right? And I don't know what it is, is it that people feel um, they can relate to that person? Like I, I know I get lots of messages as well when I do stuff that kind of hits home to people. Um, and likewise, when you talk you know, a little bit more serious about something in particular, they might reach out too. Mm. So I think it's the the not feeling like they're the odd one or something like that that somebody yeah. else is going through, right? And the, and we look, we'll talk later on that where the problem is in the industry, though. There's you get a lot here. Yeah, the industry. Well, you will that. What I was just even what I was going to say there was there's genuine and there's fake, and that's the problem as well. And the, and and that's where I always have tried to separate and say, trust me, I've done the whole bodybuilding industry. I've seen the fake is the stuff that would blow your mind. You you were. In competition level. Yeah, like and... In super shape. And just where people go, God, oh, I met... Uh, look, we no, we're going to keep focused because yeah. the two of us will get... <laughs> Me and you, we know yeah, each other too we, well. I'm, we'll keep gonna, I'm determined to get this one. Yeah, I want to nail this podcast, to be honest, and I want it to be focused. So this article, guys, is based on cortisol and adrenaline, all right? I've been talking about it for a couple of years. People were same again in the, in the food industry, if you like, in the bodybuilding industry. I used to be talking about the effects of hormones, the effects of cortisol... And people who may have been a rival of me online or whatever to call it, they would be the one then that would, that would be trying to say that I'm only trying to complicate things. Mm. And I'm trying to do it to sell plans. And at the end of the day, things come back to calories. So um, that has brought, I've never lost uh, touch with that whole cortisol side of things. And I've really analyzed it over the years. Um, look for, I assume some people don't know, my father died with a thing called multi-system atrophy. It's a form of Parkinson's. I just remember I watched the whole system. I watched the way he deteriorated over 10 years. Definitely got a lot of me mental resilience from that as well, watching his attitude, different things. But it, it actually brought me, I, I've, a couple of years after he, um, no, sorry, very soon after he died, we got the post-mortem back. He, he donated his brain to science. They came back with the, with the results of why he got Parkinson's and they said, we don't know basically, right? But they found one little um, bruised area, if you like, right? A bit of scar tissue, they said. And that was the only thing that was evident on his brain. So damage. But they, <clears throat> they went through it in their terms, which was quite difficult to read at the start. And I got a good friend of mine, Rory Murphy, to read it with me. And he was like, look, you can't say yes or no, but it's very clear that there What's is... What's Rory? Rory is, Rory is down as a chiropractor, but he's, he's not. He's way beyond that. He's not just into cracking or anything like that. And when you get him, when you get him good, you get him good. And he knows... A, He's such a broad, like, look, he's... What is he now? He's probably late 50s. He's mm. outrageous experience. He's specialised with kids and... You know, we're going into work together now with kids with autism and all that stuff as well and different, uh, you know, issues like that. But um, I stumbled across the whole injury side of things. Look, I have me, I'll briefly try to cover, I suppose, my own stuff with injuries, going up and down to Santry for fucking eight to ten years. Same stuff all the time, not getting anywhere. Football injuries. Yeah, hip stuff, you know, the typical GA crack going on. They are told you have a weak glute, you have a hip drop and so on. And I'd done everything they asked and more. And I was always very creative as a coach and... 
I went to New York, met another guy, you know, I came back from there with a lot of knowledge and I started to fix people then. So sciatica stuff and all this basics, but through personal training, not through hands-on work. But when my father died, I said, I, I want to learn more about the brain. But I was literally sitting at home Googling like neuro anything. Mm. I just wanted to go down that route. So I came across the course, neuromuscular therapy, went and done it, was halfway through the course realizing this wasn't, right. this wasn't the right one, but I had to start somewhere. I had to get some form of papers if you like or whatever. Um, but midway through that, things just clicked for me. Um, stuff that questions that I had unanswered for 10 years, a one liner in that course went, holy shit. I wonder, is that such a thing? What, what and then from my obsessive side, I just wouldn't let up. I wanted to know the answers. I wasn't going to accept a no or I wasn't going to accept, it. oh, it's just wear and tear. It's just, it's just a part of growing old. It's just part of whatever. I just was obsessed. Um, and I, look, I, I don't think we get into too much of that today because that's another podcast. Like mm. we could talk all day on that and yeah. I'd probably like to separate that yeah, we'll, different. Yeah, we'll um, lock it off. But with this, it's really about the personalities, mm. big time. The course, all the adrenaline um, and the angry side, and the damage and effects it does to a body. So when someone comes to the clinic now, I have to immediately try and separate and figure out really quickly, do I have to look at the emotional side with that person or do I have to look at the physical side or do I need to look at both? Okay. Um, and I've just seen an outrageous rise. And the reason I wrote this is because I literally was repeating this. I was repeating this story every, it could be six, seven times a day. I could be standing over People the bed. People coming for, in. Oh my God. Like I could be standing over the bed for 45 minutes. 45 minutes was trying to get my point across and eventually then it was like when I finished the article essentially and I had this thing in my head and I said I just need to write this a bit of a disaster that way you know mm. like people are saying why don't you do would you ever do a a book even and I'm like, mm. yeah I will someday a bit of a disaster that way I just You're plow a busy on. man though <laughs> yeah and I just yeah I'm just trying to plow on and th the overall goal is to build a retreat in Ireland mm. and when I say a retreat I mean first ever of its kind that has you're guaranteed that when you come you're going home fixed not too many guarantees like that no, around. Exactly. And as I said, if you do even half of what we say, you're going home fixed. So we might talk later on some of the conditions I've worked with, whatever. Mm. But maybe we should probably I read yeah, this. Go maybe. Through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll try and keep this. I'm trying to think, do I need to read every last word? Or maybe I should pick parts from it. The biggest part we have to go through anyways is you're going to try and identify. So if you're listening to this, you're going to be trying to identify yourself with some of these traits. Um, and instead of categorize the kind of like person A is cortisol. Let's just keep it that way. Person B is a high adrenaline style person. And then the person C is basically somebody who really struggles to hold on to, or really struggles to let go. Very angry person. And for people that don't know, cortisol no. and adrenaline yeah, are so hormones that run through the blood and affect us in different ways. So basically, you step out in front of a car, you didn't see it, you get a shock. You get this burst of energy and you run out of the way, right? You get this unbelievable reaction times. We all know about that, right? Mm. They're the stuff that goes on every day. And that's just a quick example as well, where I always went, I wonder is there more information on that? That's unbelievable reaction time. Like, how can the brain do that? So that's so that's the type of stuff. Like, that'd be a one-off thing that I would have went to town on, mm. studying and researching and so on. So when you get a belt of adrenaline, it's followed very closely by neuroep neuroepinephrine. And then it's followed by cortisol. So we all know the times where somebody frightens you and you go, oh, you bastard, you whatever. And, mm. you know, and you're shook and you're all hyped up and you're energetic. Yeah. But then it's the come down. Yeah. So we know the crash that you get. Yeah. And you're going, oh, geez, I'm not right after that. Like, yeah. right. So I was like, that's mad. I wonder what goes on there. We all know what happens when you walk in and you meet someone you don't like. Your heart rate goes through the roof mm. um, and you go home and you're so annoyed and you're wound up for the day. Yeah. You know, we know that that shit goes on. There's no one here listening that can't, that's not going to relate to that mm. stuff. And I just obviously happened to go through, as you said, geez, your life seemed hard. It was, it is, there was times where it was, but I, I wouldn't be here. There's no way I'd know what I know if I didn't go through them. So I fully believe in that whole side of it, that things happen for a reason, but you have a choice too, though, don't you? You mm. always, you have a choice whether you want to respond right to it or not. Yeah. Do you know? And you do talk about that stuff as mm. well, you know, where it's the pity game versus yeah. the get on with it. And yeah, you just on. Even your last podcast has said, just to clear things up as well for people, yeah, I do a lot on Instagram, so does David. I wouldn't be sitting there, I can guarantee you, um, and I wouldn't have drove to Galway. I have, I have about nine lads at the minute um, trying to get me to do a podcast, and, I, and I, I do keep meaning to do it, I do. Mm. And I just, other things are slightly taking priority. But we're after driving down here because you are genuine. I know fake conversations, I've had enough of them over my time. And this is real and you're real and I can I talk to you outside of all of that other bullshit yeah. as well, you know? Yep. Friends. 
So in this document, we're going to try to keep it. As, I'm reading it now for you in case it sounds take very you, strange. Take your time. We've all time to read yeah. it. Uh, we're going to try and keep it very simple and give you an action plan on how to tackle the flooding of cortisol through your blood. Science shows that too much cortisol can make our blood quite toxic in a way that the fascia in the body contracts due to blood restriction. That was a small link I would have made. Okay, mm. So there wouldn't be too much talking about the, how the fascia and cortisol are linked, but would have linked those two together. Uh, the damage as a result of this long term and or endless amount of it can be either a physical issue or an emotional issue. Many times a physical issue can be caused as a result of an emotional trauma. In our methods, our main focus is to restore functional movement in the body by tackling the emotional side or the nervous system, along with the physical side of things, which is the walking gait and your running gait of the human biomechanics. Our breathing system is also known as the intrinsic muscle system. The system is highly receptive to emotions such as worry, stress, anxiety, fear, anger, resentment, hatred, jealousy, overthinking, or the most common, just unable to switch off. A large majority of people who feel many of these emotions end up with a physical injury due to the damage and restriction to the intrinsic muscle system. Before we look at different traits, it's very important to know that, the, that you, may, you may only be the one or two of these traits of the following that I'm about to mention. Um, however, like they all, they do have an effect. Um, so you can now see it, a person type A as cortisol is described, person type B is the adrenaline, and then further as we go through it, you'll see the other types of person in depth as well. But all of them affect your, your fascial tissue. And just to talk about that, tensegrity would be the big thing. I went to a course that changed everything for me. And this girl just was basically laughing at you if you even mentioned the word hamstring, glute. Do you get me? There was, mm. She was like, there's no such thing. It's fascia. Your bones were once fascia. There's videos to show that, that they decalcified the bone of a pelvis and it all turned to mush. So everything is fascia. And this is true. This is out there. But it will never, ever, ever be shown on mainstream and it will never, ever make it into colleges. Why? Well, basically because they'll have to rewrite every single anatomy book that was ever done. So you can imagine the money that's going to cost. Mm. And imagine the embarrassment from them to say, oh, fuck, we're actually wrong. Now, there is guys that have spent their life. There's a guy that would have trained me. And I just said to him, why, why are you knocking on so many doors, trying your hardest to get in? Just, just what, to get your name on a piece of paper? Yeah, well, that's, that's what I want to do. And I said, okay, fair enough. So he is actually spending his life getting doors slammed in his face every day of the week when they know it's right, but we're not letting it in. So I was kind of adopting that approach at the start on Instagram and I was going and I was shouting and shouting into rooftops and I, I was reacting as well again. We'll talk about that in a minute. Reacting to pricks online. I, for, I keep forgetting I can say what I want here. Exactly. Absolute bastards, like, you know, yeah. um, small minded little rats. It's all they were. That's the truth. Because the abuse that they give me, because I'm challenging what's going on. And then I said, okay, you see what's going on, Shane? You're getting annoyed. Forget about it. All right. You're, you're being who you aren't. You're getting tick. You're getting really, you know, annoyed online. Mm. And some people are unfollowing you from it. So, no, don't do it anymore. Focus on the results. Focus from within our house, our setup, our business, and it will grow. So last year, like I was in Kerry last week, we sold out our first clinic to go. I mean this in the most modest way possible. I don't really know anybody who has traveled in this industry and sold out places. Yes, it happens in music and yes, it happens in stuff. Not in but we were blown away that we managed to do it. But it was all planned and it was all very carefully, businessly planned, if you like. Mm. So um, the person type A... Um, Ten traits I picked. There is a lot more. I just stuck to the ten. These are the most powerful ones that people... And the hormone we're talking about? Is cortisol. Cortisol. So, number one, never switch off. I'll just go through them first and then we'll talk. Mm. Number two, always on the go. Three, a warrior. Four, you go in between anxious, nervous, shy and hyper. Reason to put them two together. Um... That specific style of a person, you, we all know, and potentially now after this, you're going, geez, yeah, I, I may be like that, or I know someone who's like that. It basically means there is absolutely no balance. Okay? They're, the hyper, especially, is going from, it's like one minute you're, you're all quiet and almost like desperately shy, and then you get excited, mm. overexcited, and you're hyper, and you're like, but it's constantly an up and a down, and up and a down. Your system is wrecked, you see, because you're doing it. Um, five, dwell on passing comments. Six, struggle with confidence. Seven, overanalyze day-to-day -day things. Eight, stress over small things. Nine, uh, allow bullies or negative people to influence or upset your mood. And ten, most important one, uses the phrase can't cope quite often. So the, quite, the can't cope ends up 
as a result of all those things. All right, so I'm gonna just leave, gonna skip straight to the little diagram piece I told you about before I go back. So the cortisol person in this diagram, okay, these are how I believe, and I have seen all these traits over the years through my own stuff as well. Um, the links and the way they go, basically. So cortisol mainly, their main emotion they operate on is fear, okay? Um, they can tend to blame others a lot, make excuses a lot, which ends up with the phrase, I can't cope, mm. okay? They also can end up, an adrenaline person can also end up as that can't cope piece because they're so busy and they're so such a go-getter that things get so busy, they can't cope. But very different scenario. Yeah. Absolute polar opposite ends of the scale, all right? The broken sleep piece, poor breathing patterns, panic attacks, then end up suffering with depression. These can be scales in which you can go through it as well. Uh, on the injury side of things, the average GA person writing to me, I'm stiff and sore 24-7, but I've no diagnosis as such. MRIs are all clear. Don't know what's going on. Woman, you know. So they say, I've tried everybody. This is this, These are the messages. That you come hear through. this every day. All the time. I've proven this. I don't need to prove it to anyone else. I've seen it. This is phenomenal. This is why I wrote this article and said, I don't need this to be published anywhere. I don't care. I just want that. When you walk through my door, you're going to go, wow, that's very powerful. Jesus, yeah, okay, I get what you mean now. Deadly. We've established that piece. Can we get to work now? That's what I do want to do. But they'd say, look, I've tried everybody. I'm always picking up little niggles, um, you know. Uh, nobody can fix me. All of this type of stuff, and that nobody spend can a fortune. F- yes, but that nobody can. I can fix me. I listen to that. This is like a minefield, by the way, because I could talk for ten hours here today on this because it keeps spanning out. Mm. You spider diagram every last word that that person says. So they dwell on things. The dwell on things piece I mentioned. Okay, they get hurt very easily. They get offended quite easily. They really struggle to quiet in their mind. They end up getting bullied easily, you know, uh, they doubt themselves a lot, tend to be quitters in everyday life, despite not wanting to be. Um, and that can, in my eyes, ends up with the suicidal piece. Okay. So that's why it is very serious. So mm. you can't just, oh, yeah, yeah, run a bit on court style. It's like, no, 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 there's no airy fairy shit here now. You're going to write this down for me and we're going to nail this now so we can move on and fix your supposedly tight hamstring, for example. Um, the bitter part, now this is the piece we might talk a little bit more on. Um, the bitterness turns into, jeal- you know, could start out just as jealousy, maybe a bit of envy. Genuine friends doing well. As I said, true measure of a person is when that person is fucking on the floor and things are not going well for that person. Especially a friend. If you have a friend, like they're friends for life, that you pick up that phone and you ring them with an excitable bit of news that you have. Or you might have won a bit of money in the lot or something. It doesn't matter. Or something is, is going well for you. And they are 100% of the time able to park their shit it. and say, oh, I'm great. fucking delighted for you. Mm. I was only talking to a fellow yesterday and I said to him as I was home, I'm off from Kerry, I rang him. I was like, and I'll say it now. I don't really, I've not gone to a point I don't really care anymore. I went to Kerry and in three or four days it made more than my whole gym well in a month. Right? And the reason I'm saying that is because it's taken me a long time to separate myself from one track mind of a focus, feeling that I, you know, like, I'm like, how do I balance this? How do I grow? Because my goal, again, I told you, was to develop and build a retreat that has all these pods, saunas, jacuzzis, plunge pools, um, all my, all the equipment that we have. And that's all on site as well. So to come and get treated at the gym, but we house them then. And then hopefully in time, depression, you know, people who are sl- proper suffering, rather than going to a place that's a hor- horrendous experience, um, you know, trying to get clear yourself for depression, like let's say in our local place, Lomans Hospital, scary, scary place to go into, maybe we can get them and, and go the route we're trying to talk about. Mm. Like let's talk about what your real problems are, but let's look at all your stuff, your food. Do you train? Do you look after yourself? Do you blah, 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 you know? And then obviously the addiction would be the other little, let's call it a business model if you like, mm. but it's something I, I do think people with addiction, we've got to figure out what, what demon are they running from? And really quickly on that one, I remember a guy who told me a great story and he, was, he said he was an alcoholic all his life and I was treating him whatever and he said, uh, I fully believed like, you know, and same thing I, I said what every alcoholic says, I can't go for one or two drinks and I go mental. And I said, that's a very powerful statement to make though. Your body listens to that. Do you know what I mean? You're basically, you're defeated already. You've told yourself that that's past, that is 100% true. You can't have one or two without going mental. So you believe that. So you're right. Do you know what I mean? But he said he was molested at six, six or seven years of age by his uncle, never told anybody. And he bottled it up 
and he said he was 44 or 5 before he decided I can't escape these demons anymore and he had to confront them and he done them his way and he confronted them and he said he literally overnight wasn't al- an alcoholic anymore right yeah. so to me I don't need to do a trial study of 200 people and try and test that because that's not possible that's enough for me like that's going well that's very powerful I'm looking at all the different things going on there you know was it the emotional side that he talked about that made him you know get that monkey mm. off his back was it that release in emotion that happened? You know, what was it? We don't know. We don't really care. We just know that he's not, it doesn't matter. He's not an alcoholic, not, he's not an alcoholic okay. anymore. It's, it's funny when I'm talking to you and knowing you on Instagram and the bite back you get and stuff, when genuinely you just want to help people. Yeah, people say, Jesus, it's very dear to come down to you. We charge 400 euro for four weeks or we charge 250 for what do we call an NCT. <laughs> Basically when NCTs we go through your whole body But don't lie on the bed telling me I've had um, Achilles tendinopathy for 10 years Well that's a chronic injury And we have to figure out why you have that chronic injury So don't try and skip through the system Because if you do you won't get fixed Whereas the 400 allowed us to say Okay I'll tell you how it, how that happened actually Was we were so busy man it was frightening Like it was the, the waiting list was insane And of course I thought I was doing right In trying to get them in and get them out again and then I'd be lying at home one night and i go, oh, fuck, actually, where is that one now? Oh, Jesus Christ, I can't think of her name. And I'd be wanting to contact her to say, come here, how are you after? Like, that was a great chat we had, you know, and you felt great leaving. How are you doing since? And that's what this changed for me. And lockdown did that, too, did that for me too. I said, no, done. I don't give a shit about money. I, don't give, I really don't care. Yes, I've ate staff, whatever. You know, there's eight wages being paid. There's a lot of pressures. You know, 21, 22 grand a month is coming out of my account, whether I like it or not. Mm. I have to make that money before. Um, but that's the long term goal So as I said what, what that 400 allowed us to do Was we said right You're going to work with us For four weeks now And we're going to look at this stuff I've just talked about Like we're going to figure out Are you identifying with these traits If you are I need you to write me Maybe a 500 word essay I need you to tell me stuff mm. It's all confidential Because I need to know this If I'm to fix you And if you lie to me well, I, I, I Thank God I know now Do you get me I don't you know You can read people Yes now. I don't know though Oh God, I don't know. I don't know. Does it be a, is it a gift or is it something that I just learned? I do believe everything was learned, to be honest with you. And I just seen thousands upon thousands of traits happening and going, Jesus, let's just say the cortisol people, right? They used to come in, right? And I, I get this gut feeling going, oh, there's something else going on. This lads, and they can't even look me in the eye. Do you get me? Or this girl, mm. uh, they had a lot of these um, sensory kind of stuff. Like, like I said, can't look you in the eye. Their focus was absolutely terrible. You'd say to them, for example, would you just mind picking up that black band there and put it around your legs and they walk over and pick up the purple one? Yeah, heads all over the place. Oh my God, absolutely just fried. And you say to them, did you read that article we sent you? Uh, which article? Well, the one we emailed you saying, please read this before. No, no, I didn't do Or if they didn't, they'd say, I did, I skimmed over it. So now when they come in, I go, okay, listen, you paid 400 euro, right? And, and we sent you step one and you didn't do it. But you're going to give out to me in four weeks' time saying you're not fixed. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to listen to that because I've had that before and I've had the likes of you come up, not do what I ask at all. Your head was fried. You didn't know your fucking head from your arse. And then you go home and you write a big Google review saying I'm dirt. And you're not going to get away with it anymore because then you don't reply to me when I reply to your Google review saying, man, all you do is contact us. So I said, right, that was my fault. I always look at me. Said it's your fault for not having the balls to say it to him at the start. So then we cut out. We, there's no more messages. There's no more bad reviews. It's unbelievable because the bad review now is, is a refund before it ever became a review. Yeah. Last week, fell on the bed. I knew, man, he wasn't listening. He came for the wrong reasons. I don't know why he came. Must have had too much money or something. I don't know. I was uh, half an hour in. I said, oh, I'll give him a chance. It was not changing. He was person what we're, let's say person C. All right, and we'll go through that in a minute. Radiating with anger Just an angry person Yeah do you, The minute he walks in Do you know Boom It's like Fuck me You suck the atmosphere Out of this place Yeah I'm Phenomenal And I believe When you listen to your gut enough And you don't fight that people, Every single one of us Have the ability to do this um, But a lot of us Are afraid to see What we want What we think we're seeing We're so scared If it's a partner You think is doing the dirt on you You're terrified To, to actually go Oh my Maybe they are So you fight against your gut And you bury all those emotions you know what I mean? Mm. So this is why I mean it's a minefield. So I'm trying my hardest here to keep this on track. 
Every time. But we this can, shit can go, this on, this can go this can go any direction. That's yeah. what I'm saying. There's so many stories I'm going to tell you today that you're going to be very precise. And that's the goal for today. I have a couple of stories in my head where if people identify and go, wow, guarantee us, there's going to be give hundreds. Give us a, a few examples, say, of people from the different A, B or C. We'll start, well, should we stick with A because we start with that? Um, from me or for a potential client or whatever that come in? Whatever you feel. Okay. Well, for starters, I just want to clear up that every single um, trait that I put down here, I was able to look in the mirror and say that that was me at some point. Mm. Okay. So when you say stuff like that at the start, and I do get a little awkward at that, and you go like, he knows a lot or knows everything. <sighs> Nobody knows everything at all, but fuck me, I've done some learning, but I've been honest. I've looked in the mirror and, went, and I know when I'm wrong and I know when I'm right. And I know, and I've had to question myself when a couple of relationships with friends changed and I did battle demons. Like I did, I, you know, I was really battling going, was that me? Like maybe, maybe, maybe it is me. Like that's the second person now to walk out in them scenarios. And I went, and it took a couple of years and then one day it just clicked to me and I went, ah. And it all just became clear and I seen a very clear trait. And I went, Wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm too, I'm too loyal. You might think, I don't know if that's possible. But I get hurt then, you see. And I, I put loyalty into the wrong hands. Simple as. Then they Fucked up, yeah. Used you. Yeah, like, f I, I was an idiot. And now when someone comes to me, or if I'm helping clients, I'm able to say to them, you know, educate yourself on this stuff. You will recognize traits early on in relationships, whether it's a one-way show with these people, that it, whenever you ring them and you need something, they're not there. But when they ring you, you're there. And I know already, I can feel already that the amount of people right now in that one sentence that are listening to this that are going to go, holy fuck. Everybody guarantees has friends inside their circle and that's the story. And the people that are around you in life affect you in every way. Mm. The, the people you are around and what they do and the way they act and the way they treat you, they cause ripple effects in every part of your life. And all I ever concerned about was the emotional side as in the, the damage it was doing internally. So I'll give you a quick a quick example. Um, which one's right? Let's pull from this because this is how I developed uh, a form of psoriasis at one time. Just bang, overnight. My father died a thousand... I can't even... I'm so bad. Like, there you go with dates. Like, people get offended sometimes. Like, I'm just well, I terrible. can't remember dates. Yeah, if terrible. Vicky goes mad, I can't remember the day we got married. <laughs> 16. Yeah, it was a twenty. It was Christmas. It was 22nd or 23rd of December. I was landed in Toronto and so on. I just playing, literally touched the ground. Phone got coverage. Phone rang. It was my brother. I was flying to Canada to meet him. He rang me saying, Daddy died. Stay there. I'll fly to Toronto to meet you and we'll go home. And during this time, this, this, this relationship with my cousin was beginning to fray a bit. And I was going, what did I do? Like, what's going on? You're acting odd lately. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then that nothing turned into, I'll tell you when I'm ready. And I was like, so now I'm able to look back and now I have that education to go. People, there is some people in life who love control. So that whole, I'll tell you when I'm ready or guaranteed there's people listening and they fell out with someone, but they can't put their finger on it. They don't know what happened. Then by while points. I'm on that, because my mind is going a thousand miles an hour, that exact scenario. So if you have lost a friend or you had a very good relationship diminished, it's for two reasons. Again, in my opinion, I think at the end of this, you make your own opinion on it. One or the other was too afraid to have confrontation and nip something very small in the butt, you know, mm. when it was small. And it got awkward and it developed and it festered inside the body and then potentially turned into an anger. And I was like, oh, fuck that. Or you just drifted apart. This is the other side. And the drift apart can happen again from something very similar. A delayed confrontation is very toxic. Irish people are terrified of confrontation. They think it means a fight. Mm. Confrontation solves everything because the great thing is if it's a win-win scenario because say you do, say I come to you, right? Say I talk to you about something in the car on the way up. And I had a friend said something to me and they didn't realize, the hand and heart didn't, right? They said something to me and they hurt me. They really did. And I had a choice to, to get angry or I had a choice to say, no, I'm going to tell him because maybe he needs to know this. But that was decision time then. And I came and I just basically said, um, you know, he said something the other day and it actually did really hurt me because I didn't expect that to come from you. And I did. All I did was be honest. We had the chat. He was floored. He said, I'm so sorry. I, I swear to God, I didn't mean like that. I said, that's deadly. No problem. I just had to let you know. 
And that friendship would be better than ever and now. And if you hadn't, that would have festered. Well, I would have. I, if I was normal, I would have just f- slowly uh, distanced myself and vanished. Mm. But this with my cousin, the same thing. Um, I noticed things were going wrong. Absolutely loved him to bits. And for about three months, I, I couldn't get an answer. What have I done to you? Like, please tell me. Like, I'm begging you. you Whatever it is, I'll fix it. But I don't know what I did. Next thing, I started developing psoriasis. And I was like, fuck me. I was in bits, I was. I was in bits. Couldn't eat. Nothing. Couldn't function. Couldn't concentrate. Nothing. All these traits that I'm talking about. And I went for Reiki. Never had it before in my life. Right? And now I look back at Reiki and go, basically what Reiki is, is you're going into a room with an individual who has a very calm and presence about them. Very calm and energy. You're allowing your body to go into a very, very calm state, a rested state. But I was lying in that bed and I fell asleep. And was in it my just he- the first time you were so wound up? It was the first time you got to relax? Or I was a high adrenaline. I am I am high adrenaline individual here in this article. And I've we'll talk about that in a minute again when I talk about that. The, how you use adrenaline the right way, you know? Um, but anyways, I went in and I got the Reiki done and I came down the stairs in my gym. Man, I've never felt anything like it. It was phenomenal. I just felt so light. And I walked down the stairs and said, I'm done. That's it. And I never contacted him after that. That one that session. Was, that was it. And 24 hours later, their psoriasis was gone. No way. Completely gone. And was it because it, the Reiki, say, did it get you to a calm and it got to that the, you made the decision? I don't, I don't know. Was it, the, was that my subconscious mind working away in the background processing what's going on? Because it kept, it was like a reel. It kept happening. It kept repeating. But by the time the Reiki session was finished, man, it took a millisecond to come to conclusion. But was it, it was a millisecond? Processed. My, that it you was could, like my thoughts were You processing. could look at your thoughts from the outside in. I don't know. It was just genuinely like a dream. And in the dream, I processed my thoughts and said, you just let it go. You can't change people. You've tried more than enough. Mm. Walk away. So that was when I, years on, went. It, like, I didn't, by the way, I didn't know, like, I didn't cop that psoriasis. That whole thing has only me looking back in life going, fuck me, it was. Mm. That's what I'm saying. So when people say, is it really connected? Yes, that's why our results are phenomenal. Because we look at every part of it. You're not going to escape it. And if you don't like it, like people have left, by the way. And people have fully signed up and then we sent them this and they asked for a refund. Because they knew that we're going to talk about this. And they did not want to go there. Embarrassment. Yeah, didn't and want also to face I, their Exactly. Emotions. They knew, Jesus, what the fuck is this lad? I'm not getting into that with him. And I do say to people, some, if you're not ready, you're not ready. That's fine. I won't force it, but I need you to... I'm, it's, like a, it's like nearly a guarantee. Like when I give out that guarantee, it's like me saying to you, I can't give you the guarantee now until this. Because I know in my whatever experience, gut, blah, blah, blah that we really have to look at this man. Do you know what I mean? And just to finish on that one, I suppose, uh, the idea is when you, when you are, when your mind is racing for the wrong reasons, so let's say you've been stimulated, your body has been stimulated by something else, by a thought process. Mm. So you're driving the car, you're fine, and boom, a worry comes into your mind. Your whole system changes. So cortisol starts to drip feed, Okay literally, into your body. And when the body senses cortisol, it goes into inhibition. It shuts down. So let's talk about like IBS, for example. People, people going around with IBS. I'm like, let's fix the real issue, what's wrong with your body. Mm. Clean up. Yes, we have to clean up your diet. Yeah, we have to look at allergy testing. Yeah, we have to do all that. But we'll fix you because we're gonna, there's no way we won't. The body completely self-generates and heals itself. We have just been educated to believe that we, there is only one way of getting fixed, and that's true medicine. That's the problem. And it's backed up by the pharmaceuticals and yes. suits. And it's and it's 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 phenomenal money. And anyone now who speaks different is a witch doctor in the in their eyes. Yeah. Don't quite. be talking shite you. Do you get me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's gone. So I, I did. I we I've spent well over a hundred thousand on equipment and machines that are all science based. So everything we do is science based. The only piece that's not fully backed up. Now they are coming around to it. I did hear like I was actually I thought I was onto a billion euro or dollar idea and I wanted to get I, I, I asked the guy is there, how would I go about developing a machine that can prick your finger and you can test your cortisol levels anywhere at any time and he said Jesus Christ that's an unbelievable idea he said and he said why cortisol though and I said because it is the biggest killer of all and I said if we could start like, like I want to give you an example like say you're in work and you're grand and the boss comes in and your heart rate rises right mm. and I've, I've, I've obviously been working with you and I said to you 
Next time your heart rate rises, prick your blood, see what happens. And you prick it and your results are very high. You can start now logically going, holy shit, it's my boss, for example. Or if it's not, it's my friend. It's every time they text me. It's every time they say that little sly, subtle comment that's never straight enough that I can tackle you on it. It was an you under be, the hand. You can 100% see where the triggers are. Yeah, so that's the idea. And that's what I, I've developed a, a program called Sympathetic Dominance. Basically, it means it's a, it's a simple mind map for a person. Basic stuff. To start off with four weeks and how to get the mind right. So I give you cl- very clear, precise messages and you have to do them. So one more story on this piece. You, I, I sent you something last week and I said like, I could see that coming. Like I had, I had myself covered mm. left, right and center because I knew he was high, 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 high cortisol. So anyway, I sent him this article and he was crippled with chin splints. This is the angry guy. The angry guy. No, one, this is a pure stress head, oh, wor- yeah. worry guy. So when they send in their check-in, if I said to, one, if I said to any individual, hi, the process is we just need you to send three relaxed posture pictures, standing as relaxed as possible, facing the camera front side and back, and uh, send me in a walking gait, and you fill out this form on what you think your injury is, and who's told you what it is. And we get 10,000 of them pictures in. I have went through, I've, personally, I've had to go through all them, and I started to recognize all these different things, so I started to look at their eyes. And hand in heart now, the staff used to think I was a bit mad when I said this. And I was like, look at the madness in their eyes. I'd be, I'd be laughing about it in a way. like. But mm-hmm. I'd be saying, do you see what I mean, though? Look at the startled look in their eye. And they're standing really tall, clearly not relaxed. But I instructed you to send a relaxed picture. So that was that person as relaxed as they could be. And that's it. Tick the box. Done. Case closed. Okay. We now have a, mm-hmm. an intrinsic problem here. That individual ha- genuinely thinks they're relaxed. And they're not. Versus that guy there or that girl there, very chilled. No issues. And I can tell that through the photo now. Or I can see it through the walking gait. So we talk about force distribution when you're walking. Um, if a person's exceptionally angry, remember, they're tense. Very tense. So when they walk, their feet, they always have very poor feet as well. So they complain of things like plantar fasciitis and all this crap. When you say poor feet, sore feet? Um, or? Rock hard. The, t- the tissue would be... So do you know the way as adults we can't walk on stones anymore? Yeah. Well, the reason that is because we, we would have we're, we've been wearing shoes, right? So the bones and the feet no longer have to move. Okay, and then you have the emotional sides and you have loads of different things. People are genuinely not looking after their feet and building calluses on their feet and blah, blah, blah. But the bones can no longer move and the tissue gets so tense that when the stone pierces the skin, it's already under a lengthened tissue and that's why it's so sore. When you have exceptionally good feet, you can walk on stones, no problem. You look at babies, all those things where kids can run across the yard is yeah. because their feet has still is well developed. Like, you know, it's in that undamaged phase. And that's something very simple. I said to people, get them runners off and start walking on stones. Really? Yeah. But the startle reflex is vital. So the startle reflex is something else I put a huge amount of time into. So if I touch, if I have a person A and a person B, let's say we have a, a case study and you lie on the bed. So let, remember I treated you. Mm. And I said to you before, I just said, you're high adrenaline, aren't you? Yeah. The vin- straight the, away. Yeah, straight away, yeah. And hand and heart, you were very, you didn't give any signs uh, no. from anything. You were very calm on that day. Yeah. But the minute I touched you, mm. you got hard excitable, right? It, it sent you into a fight or flight zone. Yeah. And that's where I went. But And then I, obviously I put two and two together. I said, okay, this guy in fairness is exceptionally busy and so on. So on that note, we'll just read out the adrenaline styles. So mm. very similar ones, but how you react is different. So, Never switch off. Would you agree? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Always on the go. Yep. Right. So them two are, are given. They're the things. Now we have not a warrior. So 90% of the time you're not a warrior. Yeah. Of course you worry about things, but you're not a warrior. Um, not very anxious, not very nervous, shy or hyper. So mm. it's them four are the complete opposite, right? Now, the other one is, and I had a great chat with you about this, was the adrenaline trait would be react with anger to a passing comment. Mm. But that was you years that ago. That was me. Exactly. Absolutely. But, I, but you've developed that trait now and you said, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Mm. And then I even, I chat to you and saying, make sure not to suppress though. Yeah. You know, yeah. know how to, you know, sometimes yeah. you might That's just have to, to release. Do. Yeah. You have to release. But mm. we'll talk about that as well. So don't struggle with confidence really. Um, yes, like I said, we're talking 80, 20 rules here, by the way. Yes, that, of course there's times we all struggle with oh, yeah, confidence. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. But it's an 80, 20. It's not, mm. oh yeah, God, Jesus, yeah. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't compared to cortisol, yeah. yeah. So if, you, if I said to a cortisol person, um, 
would you be anxious or nervous? Oh, jeez, yeah, I would, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can hear it in their voice. Versus you, you go, ah, ah, yeah, sometimes. Total mm. different. Yeah. Body language, total different. Energy system, everything. And don't overanalyze, but do struggle to switch off. Okay? Can, ha- can, can handle large amounts of stress. People inside their circle can affect their mood, but not necessarily strangers. Mm. And then rarely use the phrase can't cope, but if they do, it's usually due to adrenal burnout. So for that was me all over. Go on, you yeah, you chat now. Mm. Uh, just about like I'd stay going, you stay going. But then when you get to that absolute burnout. But like you said, people outside my circle don't bother me too much. But if someone close to me said something, it'd it'd e hop inside you. Like they'd really, really you'd be thinking about it before you go to bed at night. It'd stop you from sleeping. You'd have to make yourself stop doing it. And when I started social media, it takes you a while to figure out, like, stop, stop that night. You know, because if you read these and if you take these on, you have to see what they are. They're actually not. And just ignore them. But when I went to you, I didn't really know all these until you read that article to me. And mm. I was reading the article and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that makes sense. You kind of know. Mm. But you're there thinking, all right, there's actually mechanics behind You just behind didn't this. think that there was a potential link to that on your migrants, for yeah, example. Yeah, but now I can feel it. Like I, I've messaged you before. Like you even messaged me, and you, 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 by watching my story, you kind of know that that's kind of stressed out or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because I know you'd you'd message me, you'd you'd notice. That's judged on your heart rate, though. And people say, "How would you know your heart rate if you're looking at me?" You can see it in body language once you get experience enough. Yeah, it's, it's like me saying to you, uh, "How are we doing, Grant?" Yeah, and straight like, away. And I'm like, "Really? Just you sound Grant." <laughs> yeah, no. Do you get me? It's an aggressive, snappy. Short tone, it's instant, like it's like, and don't ask me anymore, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. And it is what's mo- wrong with most people now that anger, that them emotions, the them hormones running through it, and, and it affects everything that we do. And it that's why we're all, every people are getting injured and carrying injuries. It's, yeah. and it's more than just a belt, it's more than well, just a box or a bang or a fall. Take the top, top county player right now, high adrenaline. Right, trying to make trend every night, trying to get the food right, trying to work, possibly as kids, on the road twenty four seven, living in Dublin, trend and Mayo, Monaghan, wherever, and he doesn't realise that this is this is causing his Achilles issue. This is causing his now in in high level um, energy work, uh, the rec fem and the Achilles in the body. So your rec fem is located the most superficial muscle on the quad. What uh, what's the rec fem? It's the rec fem is is a, your strand of muscle that goes from your ASIS bone, which is the bone in the front of your pelvis there. Okay. And that attaches there, and it runs all the way across the quad, and it wraps around and attaches to the bottom of the knee. So uh, pe- people coming to me with patellar tendonitis, for example, just fixed the guy the other day. I told him day one as soon as he checked in, I said, "Man, this is I promise you, this is the problem, but I'm not bringing you to the clinic yet." So this is why it was so powerful. And when he checked in. When he first sent his pictures, I said, listen, but I need you to go online. What, oh, was, no. what was he saying was wrong? He was genuinely chronic, chronic, chronic knee pain, patella tendonitis. He was getting all sorts of diagnosis, but he has been riddled, right? Riddled. And he has gone to everybody and he has tried everything. But nobody, the minute he checked in, I went, nope, not happening. You're not coming to the clinic until we have a chat. Read this. Get back to me. If you don't want to talk about it, good luck. He did, he checked in, he said, yes, man, that was hard, powerful. He said, yeah, affect me. That's, and I said, and any other major traumas that's gone on? Anything obvious? Yeah, I lost a, whatever, I lost an uncle. Fucking loved him. Yeah, Jesus. Missed him, something shocking. He said he felt calmer from even chatting about it. Mm. And I said, well, that's obvious, because you've, you've now logically, which are, f- see, you've your left and right brain as well, okay, and your left and right brain do different things. So if I reach out to grab that glass of water, okay, Information has also been fed back as I reach that hand out. So information has to go to my brain to tell my hand to reach out. And then information, once I do it, it has to send information back in. But when people have like whiplash injuries or, you know, big bangs to the head or bad falls, they get up and say, oh, no, I came away. OK. But then a couple of months later, a couple of years later, they develop mad physical issues. Um, or to see one muscle developing far quicker than the other. Um, if they're into bodybuilding, the one arm is always failing quicker than the other. All of these things. And that's called um, synergistic dominance or neuromuscular um, inefficiency and stuff like this. 
And they were the questions. But that, now that relates me back to what I said to you at the very start. When I was doing the course, a couple of things went, no way. Because I, I, my story very, very, very quickly was groin pain, right side, hip drop, blah, blah, blah. Get, never missed the championship game with it, but never played it 100% for nearly six or seven years. Because you were minding it? Yeah, just couldn't. I couldn't open up. Like the minute I'd open up, bang, she'd start at me. And at half time, I could barely walk. Then I developed techniques to learn how to get by. So when I, I've done all the hip rotation movements, I've done everything. I've went to America, as I said, I've seen all the movements. I, was te- as I, I put a post up one day saying, and people took it wrong, that I was just sick of looking at and I'm sick of people coming to the clinic with this anger blaming like talking to me they get tick with me because they've wasted their money I'm like man that's not my issue like you're here because I'm going to fix you like so you, you can have a row with me in a few weeks if you want but I done all those hip rotations I done cupping done needling done Thai massages um, I went to Marbella one, one time I spent 950 euro massages in five days because I was determined to find somebody who could try and fix my hip I did, I was, the woman used to come out where are you going I said I want to fix this hip and one day a Thai massage person stood on me for example by accident she stood on a spot in my leg man right up you know a high high adductor just off the ischium there on the bone and she let me over she's like oh I'm so sorry and I was like no 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 go back there six months I got out of it six months pain free over it from that, from that one spot and I said, it has to be. Well, now I knew. There's no has to be. I just was common sense and said, there's a, there's a link there. Maybe I'm lucky that I'm not in a, I'm not a tradesman or I'm not doing something else that I was in this role and mm. in this job and I was determined to find out what that was. So that got me out of about three or four years of pain. But it'd be on and off. I'd have to go up and get it done or I'd ask somebody to stand on me and so on. But like I said, I arrived at a point 10 years on. I had had good times, bad times, but no, still wasn't fixed. And uh, tore my quad then and the... The really quick story with that again. See, everything's linked. All the things I've went through are linked. Hated, absolutely wanted to kill the manager for us at the time. He knew he was under my skin and he loved it. And he was fucking looking for an excuse to drop me. He said, I started full back, played all those championships I've marked. Massive players. So I proved my point, done it, done all the hard work, training my seniors when you're 16, 17, 18, eventually breaking through and then locking down a position, for example, right? So many young lads go through it and they go through so much stress. They don't go on J1s because they're club. And I do have a good few regrets about that in a way. Like, you know, people say you don't have regrets, but I don't dwell on it. But yeah, I kind of wish I didn't fuck off for the summer or whatever. But went out and played a match completely and utterly tore my rec fam clean off the bone. And I was like a maniac that day. Having the game in my life, because I was like a madman going, I'm going to make sure this lad knows that I am still... Serious full back Wound up And I was so to go. Yeah and before the game but co- Coming into them though Me right quad I felt it was tight But at the biggest myth in GA Especially GA I say that because It's it's a, it's a much bigger industry With physios and stuff Is that they tell you For example I was told my right quad was tight When actually The truth is Every muscle in the body pulls So when you feel a tension That's a lengthened tension That's not a tightness So the dormant tissue is pulling You don't never complain of the pain there Ever because it's dormant and it's protecting itself and it's building scar tissue and scar tissue and scar tissue. And it's like a piece of string. It's like if you keep pulling it from one end, you're going to snap and create a, a tendinopathy to far side. Does that mm. make sense? Mm. So it's attached from one bone to the next. But anyways, yeah, never forget. I was raging. And I just went off and I just left Lomans then. Did you never play left? Right? I did. I went back in, but I left that time until he was gone. Refused. Because I knew the damage. I just couldn't. Get, I, I couldn't. I didn't have not have the emotional intelligence at that time because I, it wasn't even, it was more just going, I actually don't need it. I have my medals. I've done this stuff. I've played in Leinster's, played for county when I was younger, walked away and decided I'm concentrating on my business. And were you doing bodybuilding at that time? Yeah, I'd done a lot of bodybuilding from 2016, 20, sorry, 20, 2014 was my first show. We played Tyrone in a, in a, in a back door up in Tyrone. And I'll never forget, like, it was just like, my God, these boys are freaks. And I was the fittest I could ever be and they were running us into the ground. I bet the shit I was. I said, Westmeter, wasting their time. Fuck that, I'm out. And I signed up for a bodybuilding show a week later. That a week later? A, that was the start, start prepping then. And I competed in the... <laughs> actually, a really funny story, but I competed in um, the Olympia. And I never knew that you had to have a routine, right? <laughs> <laughs> Explain to everyone that doesn't understand. Oh, gosh. So basically... You have to have a fully fledged routine, like, so you have to pick a song, and you have to have 
a nearly a, a proper like like it moves and the yeah dance you had to sync it all to this dancing and you had to do double bicep a show so you have yeah, to show 90 seconds or so now I'm in the Olympia for my first show full how it plays full <laughs> and I just went this <laughs> man goes to the side he goes uh, what song are you using I was like what and he's like I said well I brought a thing but I didn't, I didn't really know why you had to bring one I said but it's um, what's her name Becca the Gandhi Britney Spears Oh, that's a great one. Can't think of it. <laughs> Shakira. Oh, I can't think of it now. Jesus, I'll get it. Uh, anyways, he goes, you're on your own now. You know you know that for 90 seconds. You're only brought out as a group afterwards. And I went, oh, you're messing. Well, I went out, man. First time, sure. Just absolute bluff the shy of it. Went out, sure. Just put nine or ten poses together and tried to give it a bit of coordination and a bit of fucking whatever. I turned it into a routine, like. But, uh. Spent about four years doing that. Learned a huge amount on regards to diets again. It was all kind of links back again to cortisol. Um, and three shows on the trot. Wednesday night. Prep coach I had on Instagram. There was no way I wasn't winning. It wasn't possible. I looked insane. I'm not afraid to say it. Outrageous work. Like a, an insane uh, commitment to the diet, to training, obsessive like and that's what grew with my social media as well. People were like, this man, fucking joke. He never stops like. But again, high adrenaline style, style person again, you know. Mm. And basically, I when you talk about bodybuilding, you talk about being dried out. right? Your, your goal is to get crisp. Like you're looking to dry out every bit of water you can. You're cutting sodium and you're putting it back in again. There's a lot to it, like a huge amount to it. So I, I was, Thursday night, get my tan on, feeling unreal, confident, right? So we go back to your body, I was really confident. Yeah, things are going well, life is good. Can't wait for this. Friday, looking great. Saturday morning, savage, perfect. An hour before the show. Crash. Mess. Fucking mess. Watery reptile is all it was. <laughs> and I was going, what the fuck just happened? Right? Three shows in a row before I realized I was nervous. Mm. Terrified. Because I, I had put so much on this, like, to compete. And I put so much pressure on myself that the only way I viewed my body, if I was doing well or not, was through body fat. And then I go down to the RABBF where the big fat owner is looking at you going, nah, next, you're not good enough. And I'm going, imagine we put ourselves, like, we, we spend a fortune on food, training, you miss everything, you, you have rows with your misses, you know, you're, no, I'm on a diet, I'm on a diet. To go down there to the RABBF and have somebody could tell you, you're not good enough. And he, man, it, that whole thing fucked up my head. Is that a weird industry? Yeah, so fake. Unbelievable. Um, does it affect you as a person if you were staying at? If you were to stay at that, would it affect you? All I would do is suck you in because you have very little else. I'm very lucky that I had a very clear focus. I'm not a bodybuilder. My goal was to educate young people to show that you can be in insane shape and still play football. So I done, I competed in the Worlds in UK of a Saturday, ripped to the bone, and I played championship the following Sunday. Not the, not the next day, one week later. I togged out, ripped to the bone, and played championship for the rest of the summer. So all I was determined to prove was you do not slow down when you, do, when you know about training. So my goal was to get up to 92 kilos. I was obsessed with the NFL. Like I made the mistakes. I was just, I was the 10 and a half stone college fella that went really skinny and um, got dropped from the DAT team going, look, you're just too light. You're a great little footballer, but you're too light. I said, right. Came back two and a half stone heavier um, about 18 months later and then got a scholarship and played Sigerson or whatever. But I slowed down a little bit because I'd done it too quick and I trained like a bodybuilder. So I said, right, no, I've got to get back to being fast. Because I said, when I was 17, I used to compete. I'd done long jump for... You you don't do anything by half. No, it's probably a little... Well, I've managed that, but yeah, no, I kind of realised that now. I'm, if you but, said that to me, you're too... you've learned a lot by doing that. Like, everything yeah. that we're talking about, you've well, learned that's, by exactly. It's, thank doing God, that things. adrenaline trait. If I wasn't as obsessive... But this is the big thing I always say to people is, you should always... There's nothing wrong with being uh, slightly obsessed or passionate, really raw passion. But you have to be passionate yeah, about something. Yeah, but you're going to get backlash because some, they they look at you admiring you. I've had, man, I've had people who on nights out have told me, like close friends, like, 
it all comes out when they're drinking, you know. And like, I don't know how you do it. Like, I don't know how you put your head out there so much and take so much abuse. I really admire you. They don't talk to them. They don't talk to me anymore. Why? Because you turn love into hate. It's a very dangerous thing. Now they're going, a sickening bastard. See, the conversation has changed. See, we're back to our article again. You know what I mean? You're gone from envy. Yeah. A little bit of jealousy. God, he's doing well. For play to him. Next thing, he's a fucking prick. Yeah. What a wanker. Yeah. And now they're the ones. What do you think uh, is... I'm trying to think while I say this here. What, what, what do you um, think is the biggest problem with the industry you're in, Shane? No, I am. I'm going to say this. just had to think there for a minute. Was I going to say this or not? The last conversation I had with my cousin was, please, for yourself, stop with the anger. Please. You're going to get very sick. And I left and I looked behind me and he dropped his head and started crying like... <sighs> And I, there's nothing I could have done or said for him. Like, I told him to his face. He wouldn't listen to me. And then I get a message there about a year ago that he's diagnosed with cancer. So I don't give a fuck about any science. But I think anyone that's listening to this, anger, anger and stuff like that, you, you can feel it. Like everyone knows. You feel it inside. Like, my heart is thumping on my chest now because it means, it means something to you. Do you mm, get me? Mm. I, I, but we've all been there. Mm. I've had friendships that were really important friendships to me. Like, really important. And for one reason or another, they just turned toxic. Yeah. And you just had to leave. And even though you know they're toxic, mm. and even though you know this person is bad for you, yeah. and you have to leave them, it doesn't hard. make it any easier. No, it doesn't not. It's really hard. But you have to get through that hard time because you have to look after yourself yeah because it just it, it knots you up inside mm. and i've went through it's pain it's physical like physical. this is what i said about intrinsic it's called mm. the intrinsic muscle system so you literally have your intrinsic muscle system the five stages of the human connect chain right are there for everybody to see by the way i'm not doing anything any different all i've done was connect the dots in a massive way because i've went through so much absolute turmoil and seeing how it affects my body. Like, I, I had shin splints for seven months or something like that. I lost my testosterone. I did not get an erection for nine months. I thought it was gay. Like, loads of things. Because your mind's like, what is wrong with me? Like, mm. I, go to a, I go to a woman and she tells me I've... She does a massive amount of testing on me. And she changed, she changed my life. Like, she saved me because she went, look at the state. Look at you. You can't sit still. Fucking pure adrenaline. Do you ever stop? And I'm like, well... Yeah, but sure, you know, you're trying to look yeah. for, and uh, she changed, she turned it all around, so that's where I went, what, and what's CRP, she said, I said about CRP, and I said, what's CRP? She goes, it's the indicator for inflammation in your body. I said, all right, and I said, what happens if that's too much? And she goes, well, you can develop an autoimmune condition. So I taught my father straight away, and I said, what, what else can happen? And she said, well, you'll get digestive problems, you'll have different things. And daddy had heartburns for like 30 years. You can remember that. Yeah. That's all coming back to you when yeah. you're hearing. He taught it was just eat a Rennie. How many old lads and old ones eat Rennies? Mm. You know what I mean? Gives an old Rennie of a heartburn. Because no one said, did you ever think you could fix that? Go to someone who knows about that. There's something you're eating. There's something you're doing. There's something going on that's causing inflammation. That's causing you heartburn. That's why when people come to me and they say, like some people take a little bit of offense now, I'll be honest. Like it's, I've, I've got no one now that um, don't, I don't even look at the MRIs anymore. Eileen works with me and it's a blessing because <laughs> and Elaine and them because I don't read. Like literally, I've, the three girls have Eileen, Elaine and Jade and they read all the sheets for me and they read it basically because someone might have a stint in their heart and I'd be going in then and doing all the machines. I just don't operate. I wait until I see what's in front of me. I said, I, I went down the road of learning postures. Like I looked at postures for years going, why is your left shoulder higher than your right? You know, why do I have to keep getting my neck done 10 times a week in order to play a championship on a Sunday? And these were the conversations that I had and the battles I had with the, with, the, with the chiropractor going, man, this is bullshit, like. And we became, we're best friends, like. And I challenged him and I challenged him, but I'm lucky that he had an ego and he took it on board and was like, like he now says, like I taught him, like we're going into work together, mm. seven, eight, eight years on. And he said to me eight years ago, you have a skill, he said, and I just, you don't realize, he said, but your ability to link things together is unbelievable. 
And he said, someday you will. You're, you're, you're going to, you'll get there, you'll crack a code or something. But again, it's the high adrenaline determined to find the answer. You just want to be different. I've noticed on your page, the the people that you help, the, I, I can f- see from you, you get the most enjoyment out, the most mm. proud is really unwell people, mm. you know, children. Yeah. Like, tell people that some of the stuff that you've worked, people that you've worked on, it's, um, it's mind boggling. Well, there's one that people wouldn't there's expect. You're not just uh, no. someone with sport injuries. No, and stuff. no, no. Well, actually, when 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 that figured out, like I said it, I said um, I said like I'm a hundred percent. Like I've no doubt in my mind that I can reverse, for example, what my father had. Do you get me? Mm. Get it early enough, I can reverse it. Mm. Catch the signs early. Like well, I've done work. I haven't put this video up now. I keep meaning to him. I keep meaning to finish off, and I see him every day. It's my girlfriend's uncle. And he just, he collapsed, got real sick. But they diagnosed him on MS at the time. Now, in fairness, he is ticking a lot of boxes for it. But as I just said, but that's how they developed the name as well. So, like, somebody at one point had to put a name on this. Do you get me? And then there's obviously some way more rapid ones. Do you know? But just with him in particular, I said, we have to, it's genuinely now, it was COVID, slowed things up. There's going to be a lot on that one now. We're going to do, I need to get meeting him and do a lot more on it but we made outrageous changes in three days it was absolutely scandalous treat him for three days in a row but I think the stories you're probably talking about too is um, some of the kids mm. yeah well it's, the easy stuff is the kid not being able to put their heels on the ground and it's going on seven, eight, nine years of age and that's a retained reflex or something like that that the child has some form of trauma like some form of fright style trauma or it could have just been late development of the brain or uh, they blame it on the walkers they blame that particular injury on the baby walkers that they're hopping all the time it's no it's, it's not true do you know what I mean because none of them have fixed that and then they snip their Achilles that's what they do in medicine they cut their Achilles to try and get them to drop onto the floor but we fixed that anyways thank god we've had Jesus, we've had eight or nine kids now between me and Rory that have walked with the heels on the ground and stuff like that now um, but some of the worst yeah you're talking about was the, the child in the wheelchair who had never stood or walked mm. and then he did I think it's a scary indictment on our health system uh, yeah, but sure it's that, so that so could it's go on money. for years mm. and then we one or two trips to someone like you that's passionate about it and it's like blocked. No one hears about it. Well, when I wrote to, I wrote to a hip specialist in the country because every single person that came in got me hip done with your man, got me hip done with your man. I said, my God, how much? 12 grand, 12 grand. I'm like, my God, he must be worth some money. Fuck mm. Jesus Christ. So I, I then I seen an article where he had done it in the in the Independent and he was saying like that it's an alarm and you know how many lads are needing hip operations. There's something wrong, you know, somewhere along the lines. I said, Jeez, great job. This guy must be looking to change it or whatever. So I sent him emails and stuff like that and rang the office and told him I had ten people in last month, for example, that had hips hip repla- or you know, hip operations or the arthroscopy thing or replacements and they're maybe four years post operation and they're going bad again and we've fixed them in their back plane sport so I was like just pure naive like wouldn't even answer oh no jeez no 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 uh, really good really high uh, guy but would have been good friends he'd follow me on Instagram and stuff follows me um and he obviously would have seen me through the development stage of me learning this stuff and it getting stronger and getting more stronger and stronger and more passionate and then all of a sudden the results were huge like mm. undeniable exactly and that's what with the that's what the aim was yeah you get enough people like an Irish person will not sit in front of you man in, with a camera in their face and say I've been to A, B, C and D for the last 10 years this is my story blah 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 and I came up here today and I know that I'm now fixed because we'd always ask them, what can't you do? What can you do? And I could try and walked upstairs in 10 years. Grant, try walk upstairs. 75 years of age. Boom, up to go. But the problem was we took that for granted then. It became the norm. And I went, fuck, I have to get back posting that shit again. Like People don't realise what we're at up here. Mm. So now we just went backlashing it over again. And it's it's deadly. But that's the, the goal is we're, we're in Mullingar. And they're going to, I'm going to fix. So I'm building the oak at the house now at the minute. You've seen that. Yeah. The retreat. And it's be cool. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to do it at the house, but I just said, you know what? I'll do it in house. I won't be Airbnb in a type thing. I don't want strangers at my house. I want people who are connected to me to follow me that I'm trying to fix that are not narcissistic freaks. People don't know what you do because you're so busy you don't promote. 
No, and that's the you, truth. I've had you, to train. You don't yeah. bother telling anyone because no. word of I developed alone. a habit, you see. It's a habit. I just got... Like, in the last two years, I've come on more in my life than I have in 10 years of working. I swear to God. Sure, I showed everything back when I was just a gym and I'm the pot to piss in, like... I just get frustrated when I'm watching loads of stuff mm. and I know that there's an awful lot of people suffering out there and an awful yeah. lot of people need help and there's more... There's more things out there to try than going to the doctor and getting a Xanax or getting, do you know, all these like pharmaceuticals. And there is people, though, that if I try to have those conversations, like I, like a woman was on a plan there. She was on eight weeks. So she was paying 400 a month, right? So it's down as unlimited service, basically. Get as many treatments you want, fucking whatever you need. Use the audiovisual tr- rooms, blah, blah, blah. But Elaine, Elaine Mind, like, would have given her a, a huge intro to it. And I met her then and I went... Shouldn't have done that. And she was like, why? And I said, no, she's going to be harsh. She's not going to, she's not going to do what we ask her. I guarantee you. You've, because she, she was doing her job and being really good. It's shocking to say that you, you have to pick and choose who you're nice to almost. Mm. And she goes, what do you mean? And I was like, watch, she's going to, I've, I've seen, like she, she could check in and she'd say something. Like she was just so forthcoming. And I said, listen, I love the fact that you tell me exactly what you're thinking but you better be able to take that back. So when you're wrong, you're going to, I'll tell you you're wrong and we'll have a great relationship and we'll fix you. Agreed? Mm. Yeah, of course, of course. Next thing, boom, overnight, get this email. Can you cancel my whatever? Uh, It's absolutely nothing like what I expected. Um, Now I mean we bent over backwards to this person. And I kept going again. I was like, I know this one is just going to end up walking out like, you know. She doesn't want to fix herself. And every time, and the reason I'm telling you this is because that the whole doctor's story, I'd be like, listen, autoimmune conditions develop. You've just told me you've had 50 years of absolute turmoil, you poor old liver, like hardship. It's going to take a good while to unravel them thought process, the way you talk about yourself. You know, like, like your body listens. I said at the start, your body listens to everything. You're trying to lose weight and you keep knocking yourself saying, oh, sure, I'm fat. Oh, sure, I'm useless. I'm a mess. When I do things like the Hell Week or the cycle, I'm on that bike telling myself, I'm a machine. My legs are like pistons. I'm not going to stop. You can't make me quit. And eventually your body listens. And that's the truth. You just hammer them words home and the fucking changes are unbelievable. Um, the, can I say it? The angry people. Go for it. So person B, these emotions affect us in a similar way. Number one, struggle to forgive. Number two, holds on to anger. Number three, resentment or bitterness towards others. Number four, hate to see others succeed. Five, always think they are victims. Six, find a problem with every solution suggested. Seven, bury problems instead of dealing with them. Eight, rarely look at themselves and point out flaws with others. Nine, hold on to hurt. Ten, allows jealousy to control them. So, really quickly, we'll come back to what I said. Firstly, let's tackle the person A. It'll vary depending on this, uh, if you are simply a resilient person at heart or not. In a nutshell, when things get tough, do, do you quit or do you use do you use it as fuel to become better? The main emotion is fear and worry. If it is fear and worry, it is simply overthinking or stressing and struggling to switch off. This depends on the type of person you are. So like I said, I have been all of those traits. A, that doesn't mean I'm a highly driven cortisol, but in that particular phase of my life, of course I was worried. I was stressed. I was blah, blah, blah. I was insecure I was overthinking people's comments I was reacting to bastards online and it was it was extreme so there is an element of extreme to me there's no doubt about it and I'm, I'm okay to accept that but I didn't like that label for a while because I, I said no but I have the ability to control yeah yeah like I was 20 I was in college started to play a bit of blackjack started winning never lost this is fucking easy next thing I started losing all of a sudden, I lost like 10, 15 times. I had no money. Didn't actually notice. But when I, when I consciously realized, I went, oh, shit, I have actually an issue there. Done. Not playing anymore. And then a year or two later, you're able to just go in and play another game if you want. And good luck. But it's the ability to know when to quit. Like I've sent to you about the gym. Lots of people went, hi, oh, your man failed. I went, no, little do you know that wasn't a failure. A failure would have been me allowing my ego and Instagram apparently profile to come in the way, stay there just to prove somebody else wrong. And I went, no, I know the ins and outs of what's going on here, but legally I can't say I'm because I trusted somebody. I don't have a contract. So I haven't really a, a leg to stand on if I go to court. So I'm out here and I've got a massive lesson from it. And I'm going to show you, it'll take two, three years, but I'm going to show you why 
that I am successful and I can push on again. So that was something I always said, like struggling, you know, you got to know also. There's so many avenues to this. Mm. And this is why I need to work with people on a longer term because I'm going, like I'm working with a woman at the minute, she's Parkinson's. And she said, oh no. And really angrily she was saying to me, oh, I don't forgive. And I go, do you hear it? Do you hear that? I said, I'd love to put you to a lie detector thing. I'd love to hear her. I'd love for you to feel that, fre- see what that frequency looks like, okay, versus when you're calm. And every time you're up there, your body is in turmoil. And we got to get you out of that. Or we're never going to get rid of this or even attempt to improve your lifestyle. And we've been rowing. We've nearly, it's been like, she's coming against me, which is a high adrenaline person. I know how to be very calm. I can do the range now from years of experience. Like, I can shock people. Like, people think, well, your man's always busy. It's like, you, even you still... Now you're beginning to see it because I mm. hang out with you. Mm. And it's like, trust me, I know, wh- like, when I'm on a journey, yes, it's like, come on my way. My patience is, whoosh, and I'm like, no, I, I don't, don't want to hear this. No, I'm on a goal, move. We have to get somewhere, like building the house. I knew way had a window of lockdown to get it done. Nothing else mattered. Just move. Mm. But somebody else can call that rude because they don't have the experience to look past that and go, like, if someone snapped at me now, I don't judge. I just go, man, there must be something else going on there. And I'm like, yeah, all right. And then you always, oh, if you give them an opportunity, if they're a good enough person, they tell you, oh, I'm sorry about that. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, fucking stressed. All right, well, sure, look, leave it for today. Have you people forgot how to communicate? Well, yeah, like last two years has done that. Um, and last two years has caused an awful lot of suppression. I don't think you're going to, I'd say on, on, a, on a larger scale, I'm going to see an awful lot of this. Sicker people, because they buried every emotion. But so many people don't know the I difference between that. real life and it behind shocking. the phone. Because they're not there. No one would interact with each no. other. In re- it's like when you get into a car. It's like, I'm a normal person. Yeah. But when I get into a car, ah, someone yes. drifts in front of you. You fucking motherfucker! Yeah. I'm like, that's someone's son. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> like I don't, have to I don't know if I talked to you before about that, but I've seen something about that. And it was on about the psychology and body language and stuff. And it was that when individuals get in, they feel protected by the frame of the car. Mm. And that's what changes the, yeah. the, the whole same thing. It's the same with the internet. Yeah, but they don't, they don't think about it. They don't, but it's, the, it's when people go and they look at a story and they will type something nasty to someone or give their opinion that is absolutely irrelevant. And like, what are they doing? Yeah. Like, what but, are they but, thinking? But I, said, I said, you didn't wait down like... Another world would be great if everything was, if there's no emotion as such attached. When it comes to arguments, there can't be emotion attached. There can't be drama. So don't be doing the tears. Don't be doing the aggression. Just, can we just talk for a minute? Yes, no answers here now type mm. stuff. So like so that, somebody goes and comments on some celeb because they slipped up and they're abusing them. Kill yourself, you bastard, blah, blah, blah. Then they kill themselves and the same people will do a U-turn and say, oh, it's shocking. Mm. And I'm like, no, you see, you're not fit to be walking the streets. Yeah. Your your head is really messed up. And I still always say it comes down to the only thing that ask you a question. Have you ever scrolled through Facebook mm. and abused someone? No. OK. And the reason is. If you look at the traits of, of an individual again, it's just not in you. There's no rotten choice to be nasty. Some people get up in the morning and they make but a conscious that's decision. That's not to say when I was younger. And I would have been a, I would have been a bitter, mm-hmm. nasty guy years ago if yeah. Facebook had been a thing then. Of course, I can't say that I wouldn't have. Of course, I yeah. could have been that angry guy looking. Oh, look at this lad's great life. Oh, fuck you, you can't. But that's the great thing is, when all when all subsides, right? So we're not talking about somebody here now who was a drug addict or an alcoholic. And then found something else and stopped the drinking drugs and found sport, for example. You're, s- you're, still, an, you're still an addict. Mm. You just moved from one now, substance to another. Just I'll comment on that because I know, again, that's straight down the middle there now. So there's people who might get a little offended. So it's great that the ad- addiction is put into something else. Right. Brilliant. But when I d- if, if I was working with someone like that or I had someone close to me who's doing that. I'm still going to be that elephant in the room. I'm still going to be that person who says to you, why is it so extreme? Why do you have to climb a mountain seven days a week? Why do you have to swim seven days a week? Like, you, why are you training so hard? Do you, do you ever? You've just replaced this with this. And that is never going to end well. 
we've just talked about adrenal burnout it's not a nice thing to do you lose everything you don't want to live you're like i don't care and i went into my business for nine months when no one had a clue just put a face on just got through the classes kept tried to keep things afloat while i was trying to figure out what is going on with me but no one had a clue and that's what i realized more so than ever it's the ones who keep crying about it online as I said, someone who tells you they're going to kill themselves are not going to kill themselves. Yeah. And I guarantee you, if you'd done a study, you'd be lucky to find one. Well, sure. This is me and Shane are going to do this. We're going to try and do it yeah. once a month because there's just so much yeah. <laughs> that we could talk. Will we finish on this last piece then just yep. to so people want to take home on those exactly. things? Yeah. Um, because I said to you, yeah, we could go on forever and hopefully people have listened, will listen to the whole thing and they'll see... You know, you don't take it. I think the big thing from what I'm trying to say as well is I'm trying to cover myself with experience going, OK, bear with me. I've said something there, but don't jump the gun now. Just hear me out type stuff. Mm. And it's the same with you. Yeah. People don't do that sometimes. They just, ah, fuck that. Yeah. And it's like, stop reacting and just whatever. So I suppose really quickly, the whole thing, your goal is to find a balance between adrenaline and cortisol. OK, you want to try and find out the triggers in your life. Who's triggering them emotions? If it is, is it your job? Is it your work? It may be there the things why you're sick. Don't fight your gut. Start com- having a bit more confrontation. It doesn't have to be aggressive. You know, you'll be nervous. Ha- each time more or I- less, it's sorting out issues that yeah. are just stagnant. They're there. You need to And you'll always be nervous. Yeah. You will. You'll always be nervous when you go into um, confrontation. But on the person B, I'll read this little piece. And it says, all I'm going to say about this person is, I know it can be very difficult to get hurt and, f- and difficult to forgive at times. The natural response is to hold on to hurt and grudges. But it can be very damaging if we dwell on this for a long time, as it will add negativity to our lives. Forgiveness simply means giving up the hold that a person or scenario has on you because after all, you are the only person who is suffering no matter how much you wish bad on the person that hurt you. It's not a nice place to be. Nobody wants to be there. And also, the other side of it as well, is that people are afraid to admit that one. Don't be afraid. Like, it's okay. Like, you're human. If you wear Mm. your heart on your sleeve and you get hurt, of course you couldn't go the other way. But don't be toxic. Like, don't get out of bed in the morning making decisions to be nasty and then Mm. wonder why your life is shit. Yeah. It bleeds on I don't everything. think we have any followers anymore that are, are we've co- probably a few that are hanging on there because we're, we're their guilty pleasure but I know I lose 50 to 100 people a week mm. and again 50 to 100 yeah so we're weaning them out like you're very but it's because you've stopped you've stopped sucking on the ball sack of it's all yeah. about more followers more followers you don't care you just want uh, good followers yeah mm. um so the goal, of the, the goal is to have a positive outlook. These are the obvious. The goal is to have a positive outlook in life. Focus on yourself. Realize that for every minute you are focusing on that other person, you're going nowhere fast. Um, life is passing you by. You simply must let go. Refuse to hold on to bitterness or jealousy. Get back living your life um, rather than watching others get a plan together and work as hard as you can and so on. The big thing is, I always say, it's a very powerful image. Every time I find myself, so I still will be times I get distracted. I could be scrolling through Instagram. I see something and go, oh, you're such a false bastard. And I'm going, right, well, Shane, you cop onto yourself now. Unfollow or do something. Why are you doing that? Because for every minute, I, I visualize that as soon as I talk like that, right, that train has stopped. Yeah. If some, Say you're coming 100 mile an hour on a steam train and there's little magpies left and right throwing stuff at you, trying to slow that train down. You're just, because they can park cars in front of you if they want. You're going to mill them out of the mm. way. But if you have to physically stop to have a, a discussion with that individual that train is stopped yeah and it's very 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 difficult to get it going yeah. again I, I, I actually couldn't articulate that the way you said yeah. it I, I'm like that as well yeah if I notice something is bothering me just that's that's their issue keep yeah. going think of the fuel it takes to get it going again it's yeah. like heating a sauna mm. it's very hard to get it up to the point and yeah. then it's easy to control it but that's you know that's the big thing um and let me just real quick is there anything else um the adrenaline, if you are somebody just a high adrenaline, as I said, I'll just read really quick. Um, so the high adrenaline people generally are the ones who, you know, they're who people call on during stressful times. They're the people who get shit done and so on. Um, the downside of all of this, though, is you will experience adrenal burnout eventually. You'll crash and burn or perhaps you'll do it every few weeks, which used to happen to me for a long time until I hit that final wall, you know. Um, tends to happen in a cyclical fashion where they may work very hard or train hard for a couple of weeks and then crash. Usually crash happens when there's a buildup of frustration or keeping things bottled up. If it doesn't sound like you, the other reason is that you were mentally you were mental busy rushing and racing, a busy fool, resulting in a crash in energy. So the typical housewife, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. People at home, 
like you said yourself, you have a goal. You're going to have kids. I need to I need to create a life here quickly. You're not asking to be a millionaire, but you don't want to be worrying. You want to make them comfortable. Mm. But that also is where you have to go. Well, check in on yourself every so often. You know, go away for a night. You know, stuff like that. Um, these exact responses. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, this type of thing comes out eventually when people are short tempered or being snappy with the people closest to you. That's a big thing. It's very easy to snap at the people close to you, but you won't go. This is me personally. I came home every night fighting with, with Yaz because I was avoiding the hard chat with my business partner. Mm. And eventually, taking I'll never it, forget. Taking it out on the person closest to you. She goes to me one night, do you ever shut up about him? And it man was like a knife straight through my heart going, how dare you type thing, I was thinking. But I didn't. It was a wake up call and I went. And she could see it in me and she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I was like, no, no, you were right. You're right. I needed that. I need that. And I was like, that's it. No, you're right. Boom. And they, that sort of stuff has happened to me a couple of times. Because I genuinely was hurt. You were just hurt. So you need people to catch you early and say, okay, we get it. But what are we going to do about it? Hmm. And when I have them chats with people in the gym, they're going, oh, yeah, but it's hard. I was like, yeah, everything about your voice means you're a queer. Where's that adrenaline gone? I've actually, and I'll finish on this note, I suppose. Look, we will do more. And they can write yeah. to me. And if they want, you know, stuff on that, they can. But I'll just finish on this one. There's a guy, he was on the bed one day and he was he kept at that. And he had gone through a horrendous thing. It's all over, like, the the internet and stuff. Is You know, he lost family members and stuff in a fire. It was fucking shocking. But I just remember and everything. And I said, I know at one time, I know by you, you were a high, high adrenaline person. You were a really high achiever. And this just took it out of you. And he was starting bawling, crying on the bed, like. And I said, all I have to do for you is find that bit of fire again in your stomach. I said, and we have to bring that out in any way, shape or form. If it's throwing yourself into the coldest water possible, allow that adrenaline to come into your body. If it's training, I want you to get really aggressive, like, you know what I mean? Get it out of you, flush that cortisol out of you, flush that fear, that worry, all that. And I said, change how you speak and so on. And like we got, sure changed everything sure, for him because it was a slow process, but he understood, okay, you're dead right. Mm. I've got to find the old me back. I've got to get that fire. I have to pick myself up. And at the end of the day, I know we do say it a lot, but that's a very long in-depth story of eventually you have to shut the fuck up and get up and do something about it. Like. Exactly. I totally agree. But look, we could talk for hours and hours and hours and it's a Sunday and my Jamie's gonna go mad. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if people are contacting you, they could. There might be elements of that they'd like to expand on. Or yeah, something. look, if anyone wants to contact the Wood from the Trees or email or email me or email Shane, but I'm gonna try and get Shane on as much as we can. Shane's incredibly busy, and we'll try and work it out because there's a lot of things to flush out there. There's and a couple of savage ones I could do in nutrition that links to that uh, stuff yeah. and give people a lot of exactly. And it's like homes. with most things, we don't know if we are. Exactly right on everything, and um, but one thing that we're not doing is we're not lying to anyone. No, so no, we're we're just trying to figure shit out like everyone else is. And we're only sharing the experience that I can't deny and say that individuals have lay on that bed and this was their story. And when we fixed that story and we fixed blah blah, we fixed whatever. Exactly. They're not. He said, she said. That's not that happened. Yeah, yeah. numerous times. It's factual stuff. But um, thanks a million for listening, awesome. Shane. Thanks a million for coming, and hopefully we're gonna have a few days. And thanks to. Colin, my Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for listening. See you next time. Cheers. Good luck.